Alright, so welcome back guys, or welcome if this is your first time here. I'm Vision here with Blind Entertainment, bringing you guys another video. Today I'm going to be doing my review for Captain Marvel. I apologize for getting this review out late. I didn't, wasn't able to see it opening weekend, and then I had a crazy week this past week after I did see it. So I apologize, I'm going to be tr trying to do better to get my movie reviews out earlier. for Because I'm going to try to move into movie reviews, like Marvel movies and stuff like that. If you have any movie reviews that you want to see me do, let me know in the comment section down. And if I'm interested, I'll try to do them in the future. But let's move in to this review of Captain Marvel. Now, right off the bat, going into Captain Marvel, there was a lot of controversy, and there still is, regarding Brie Larson and some comments she made. Now, I'm not going to be talking about any of that. We're just going to be talking about Captain Marvel, the movie itself. Now, looking at the movie as a whole, I'm going to say it's a good movie. It's not great like Infinity War, but it's not as bad as, say, Iron Man 2 and 3 or For the Dark World. It's still a good movie. I think it's, oh, if I had to compare it to anything, I'd compare it to, like, the Ant-Man movies. They're not the best. They're not the worst. They're in the middle. And I still enjoy watching them. When there's nothing better to do. I always have one of them on in the background. Something like that. And I, com I compare it to one of those movies. It's not that bad. Brie Larson. Well I admit her acting is a little glitchy here and there. I I, I was a little nervous when I first heard Brie Larson was going to be Captain Marvel. However I think with what she had and what she, got, what she had to do. She was fine a, a, in the role. And I feel like this was the opening act and we'll see more of her in Endgame. The storyline with her, with her storyline with her being on the Kree planet and being with Star Force and up on Earth. It was a good concept. Her trying to remember her memories was good. And finding out who she really is was a good concept. Something different than like the usual Marvel origin story movie that we've seen in the past. I, I did like it. It was a good concept. My biggest con though with the movie in regards to Captain Marvel is I didn't like how like when she was captured, how some of the flashbacks played out. I feel like she, when she was first captured by the scrolls, she should have just remembered the one with Marvel, and then later on remembered the ones at the end when she fully restored her memory. I think that would have been better. But overall, I think Brie Larson did a good job as Captain Marvel. And I'm interested to see what the character does moving forward. We know she, there's going to be at least two more Captain Marvel movies. We're going to see her in Endgame. And I think she signed up on for seven movies. So she's probably going to be in like, what, four other movies than that. So that's pretty cool. And I'm excited to see where she ends up and what her character is like. Look, was her acting not as good as it should have been? Sure. But it was still, uh, she was still fine. I feel like it was just opening act. The opening act is done. And we'll see who Captain Marvel truly is in Endgame and in the sequel. Look, it was a good movie and I liked what they did. Then moving on to Nick Fury. Nick Fury was a good character. They did some good things with him. And it was like a buddy cop movie. I will agree that the structure was a little off because the first act was on with the Kree and Star Force and all that. And then it kind of turned into buddy cop stuff with Nick Fury, which was a little, it was good. I liked it. It just felt a little out of place. And then in the third act, I will say this. The second and third act were good. Probably the better acts. The first act is act is the one that felt a little off to me. And felt like it was a different movie. But I I still liked it. And it was still a good movie. The four wasn't as bad as, say, like, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. That one, The four of that just happened due to the villains. But overall, still a good movie. Then you got the Kree and the Supreme in Intelligence. Now, I understand that Annette Bening was playing the Supreme Intelligence because of Marvel, and it was who Captain Marvel would see. However, I feel like Annette Bening as the Supreme Intelligence was not a good pick. I think she fit the role as Marvel, but not as the Supreme Intelligence. I get why she was the Supreme Intelligence, but I just felt like it was unnecessary. And a little bit, I just didn't, something I didn't really like to see. The Kree themselves, I really liked Jan Rog and how it was revealed that he was the actual villain and that the Kree were the antagonists, not the scrolls as we had originally thought. And their relationship was very good. And I really, actually really liked Jude Wall in the role as Marvel. I think he did a really good job playing the role of Marvel. And I really liked his like mentor role in the sense that he had. Now, we did see. 
uh, Ronan and Korag, I think that's how I pronounce his name, from Guardians of the Galaxy. They were just there. I feel like they were a waste. I know there is, there. they might be setting him up to return in, in Captain Marvel 2 as a villain. But at the same time, we know his fate in Guardians. So why would we, I don't know, it just felt like a waste of time. I feel like I would rather seen him here than in Guardian, than have him appear in, a, in another v- movie just to know his fate in the end. I get it, fans want to know an origin story, but I'm 50-50. I, I could give or take whether Ronan returns in a sequel or not. But overall, very good stuff. Then you got Maria and her relationship with with Carol. I really liked their relationship, especially the daughter. I really liked the daughter. She was a good addition to the movie as well. The actress who played the daughter was really good. And I'm excited to see if they ever bring them back in a sequel or whatever. I think... Now, I don't I don't read the comics, so I don't know. But I really, I from what I hear, the, the daughter is like her sidekick in the present or whatever or something like that. I'd be interested to see what goes on there. But overall, the, they fit their role well, and they did they did some good stuff with connecting her memories. That's another area where I feel like we could have seen her flashing back and remembering some things. Good stuff there. I understand now. Moving on to the scrolls, they they were more of my favorite things. Ben was it Ben Mendelsohn or whatever as Talos was a really good character. I really loved the charisma of the actor and the scrolls and how the Kree have been trying to eliminate them. And ha- and they're just trying to survive. Really great stuff. And how Marvel was helping them. And they were double agent. And we do get some good stuff with the Tesseract. And connecting some dots. Some really good stuff. I really liked what they did there towards the end. With with, Mar- with Captain Marvel helping them. Really good stuff. My biggest condo in the end. With the final fight scene. Is it was very dark for me at least in the theater. So I couldn't really see what was going on but it was some really good stuff with the fight scenes at the end with the dog fights and stuff like that really 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 good stuff there and I just am excited to see what goes on in the future the, my biggest con with the movie is it didn't really add a ins or tie up any plot holes regarding why Fury didn't like contact Captain Marvel like during the first two Avengers movies or Civil War or something like that. I know Civil War might be an out there one, but I feel like the first two Avengers movies she should have been called in for it. It didn't really connect the dots there. But overall, still, this is a very good movie. I I liked what they did with it, and it was a good stepping stone. Not the worst Marvel movie, but not the best. It's an okay movie. Look, I know people are are, are getting all like SJW and stuff. Like, can we get? Can we just get over it? Can we just remember that this is a Marvel movie? Can we step away from the identity politics and just go to the theater, enjoy the movie for what it is, and forget about it? That's what movies are supposed to do. They're supposed to make you forget about the identity politics, and I kind of am sick and tired of them all. This was a good movie. I highly recommend it, and I think you should definitely check it out because it is a very good movie, and it does add in some good stuff for the post credit scene where you see Captain Marvel show up after the Avengers have found Fury's little, what was it, pager, and are trying to figure out who it's calling. Some really good stuff there. Now, we did have Goose in the movie. I, I know I didn't mention Goose here. I feel like Goose, from what like one of the early reviews that I had seen, was a little bit over the top for me. I don't I don't get why fans are so into the character. I get it. I get why some can't fans might like him, but he was a little eh, it was just okay. I now two things I want to mention here with Goose actually and Captain Marvel is we get two like two plot holes are answered. One is Fury's scar. Now, I know there are a lot of fans who hate the reveal of how he lost his eye. Look, I can understand why they hate it, but personally, it doesn't bother me too much. I feel like the 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 story behind the scar was has been hyped up so much, and there's been so much emphasis on it that I honestly I didn't think it was gonna be anything huge like a lot of fans thought it was. So for me, when it was the just that he, his eye got scratched, it wasn't that big of a deal for me. I felt like okay, that that that's a plot hole tied up. I get why fans are mad, but for me, I wasn't expecting any, anything big, crazy, or gruesome. 
Because it's remember, these Marvel movies are family movies. They're not going to do something crazy. So I feel like for me at least, I was okay with it. Then there's the whole Avengers initiative. I know fans are, there's a lot of fans, especially the anti-SJWs who are furious about this. I don't care. Again, names come from other places. If it came from her call sign, that's fine. I think it's cool. She was one of the first, like, actual superheroes outside of Captain America. So I feel like it's okay. She, if they want to get go there with her call sign being the the inspiration for the Avengers initiative, that's fine. I don't have a problem there. I mean, I get why some fans might be mad, but at the same time, I'm like, okay. Cool bit of tidbit of information. Now, also, I know some fans are mad about Coulson being ignored. I just feel like it was a cameo thing just to please fans. I honestly didn't care about Coulson. I was more interested in Fury and Captain Marvel. But overall, like I said, I feel like this is a good movie. Not the best, not the worst. But let me know your thoughts and opinions regarding Captain Marvel in the comment section down below. So yeah guys, that's my review of Captain Marvel. As always, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and share. And don't forget to subscribe down below and hit that bell icon. That way don't miss any more future movie reviews or any Marvel videos I do in the future. This has been Vision here with Blind Entertainment. And I'll see you next time.